All right. Uh, this is a video I'm making based on the suggestion of uh, some people I've talked to, and also because I I've shared my thoughts about Evo uh, to most of the people in my life who are actually like interested at all, and uh, and like how it went and what whether it was worth it or you know what we're in, we're invested in how I would do there. But, uh, at the same time, I, I would like a video to look back on, uh, in case, you know, it's all very clear in my mind right now, how everything went, and I just have retold my, uh, experience with it to so many different people that I feel like I've worked out a way to tell my Evo story, uh, fairly concisely, but, um... First, I want to talk about just, like, preparing for EVO and the reason why I actually was able to go. And, uh, EVO is pretty much a, a big barrier to a lot of people uh, when it comes to just affording the trip. You know, I think for most people, they would prefer to just go to a local or maybe like save up for one that they can drive to a tournament like a major that they want to drive to but uh i had never been to evo this was my first evo and i had just noticed how um how popular that tekken had gotten this year and it uh it just made me want to give evo a shot and i figured either tekken is going to be more popular next year or this is the most popular tekken may ever be and uh, with season three, who knows? It, it might be more popular next year. But uh, for now, I'm I was just happy to to go this year, just because it really was a it re there really was like a, a huge event, and uh, a lot of people showed up. Pretty much everyone who was known to do well in any of the major tournaments, even like some of the early winners, like. Uh, this year like Super Akuma and then of course Arslan Ash showed up and ended up taking it um, Korean players Japanese players anyone who was good ended up going little Majin went uh, there was just a lot of interesting players going that uh, it made it like this super tournament where it was like no one was left out any name who who played Tekken was there so, I, yeah, I was glad I was able to make it out to this one, but I, I wouldn't have been able to if it were not for uh, a very dear and uh, a very gay friend of mine, a man by the name of Chris, who uh, actually let me use his uh, flight benefits program to get these uh, standby flights, and uh, which allowed me to have, like, incredibly cheap flights there and back which were also paid for by him um and then also just doing airbnb uh instead of the uh the tournament uh, i'm sorry instead of the mandalay bay hotel that's provided by like the the tournament they have like a small discount but it's still like w way too much in my opinion when you're just going to be sleeping there and spending most of your time out, out uh, you know at the tournament or at parties after but yeah i uh I've been kind of busy before the tournament, so I wasn't I wasn't practicing a bunch. Mainly, my my main focus was fixing my sleep schedule because I had been going to bed at like four or five a.m. Um, but it all worked out. Um, my flights were a little dicey going there. I was like the night before there were 20 open spots and then the night that I wanted to take the flight there it was like not just full but there were more people assigned to take the flight than there actually were seats and the flights that uh while those flight benefits uh buddy flights that I guess they're called are uh cheap they only allow you to get on the flight if there are extra seats but uh I got lucky enough and I was actually able to like squeeze in just barely, which is uh, something else that was interesting was there was like some some cute Asian chick who I was talking to while I was uh, trying to 
get onto the flight. And, uh, she, I should have known she was going to Evo because she had blue hair and she was Asian. You know, one of those things doesn't necessarily mean she's going to Evo, but both of those, we're talking about a 95% chance. So, uh, but I actually ended up seeing her at Evo and that's how I figured out she was going. I never even brought up Evo because I didn't want to bring up that I was going to Vegas to play video games. Um... And I was, we were more interested in complaining about uh, the buddy system and also wish, wishing misfortune on the party of five that was about to show up late and give us a chance at getting in, which is what happened. But uh, that being said, I, other ways I prepared for Evo, I, all my food that I uh, consumed at Evo was bought before Evo. It was like two bags of trail mix and two bags of beef jerky and it was still like probably 30 bucks total for all that food but i made it last the whole time and uh and this was just a generally a really cheap trip that allowed me to kind of do a little bit more partying than uh i would have been comfortable with if i was buying food the whole time there so you know i i um i guess i should start talking about the tournament itself um for the for day one, you know, I, I, I got set up with the Airbnb. It was like one of those Airbnbs where I just had a room. But uh, the room had a, like, the, the it was in a gated community that had a code. The front door had a code. And then um, my specific room had a code to open. Damn, this Hey Hot, she's just crushing everything. But, um,. Uh, what I ended up doing is, uh... I called, uh, the, the next Airbnb, because I had a different place I was staying at every day of Evo. I called the, uh, place that I was staying at next and asked if I could just drop off my backpack, because I just didn't want to carry around a backpack full of clothes around Evo. And he was totally cool with it, and not only that, he also gave me a ride to Mandalay Bay. Oh, I should also mention, um... I met someone, someone on my friends list, it was a, a Vegas local, and uh, he, I was just telling him about the flight, and like he, we had already talked about maybe getting some drinks uh, while, while I was there, and uh, as I was talking to him about like what was going on with the buddy flights, he insisted on picking me up from the airport, and uh, this guy was just like definitely the coolest person I had met uh, at my time at Evo, and like you know, I had I had made friends or at least acquaintances with a lot of people at Evo, but this guy, I actually feel like, even even in his own words, we, we were just talking and hanging out, like, I think at least, you know, two of the nights, if you don't count the first night where he picked me up and dropped me off, which we did talk for a decent amount. Um, so if you count that, it's three nights we hung out, but uh, I don't think I've seen this cutscene. But anyways, uh, yeah, he insisted on picking me up, was, uh, took me to a bar after the second day of Evo, and then on the finals, he met up with me at this place called Press Start Gaming, owned by, like, a really cool guy, uh, who, uh, just talked about, well, I guess I'll, I'll skip it to make this whole short, I won't really talk about the Press Start Gaming, uh, owner, but that, that could be just a whole nother video. But, um, yeah, we went to the Evo viewing party, and he, he, he hung out with me there, and we just, like, grabbed drinks a couple times, and, uh, you know, got drunk and had fun, uh, and played Tekken, and, um, so I guess I'll, I'll go, I'll go ahead and talk about Evo itself, and, uh, I kind of wanted to get this out of the way earlier in the video, just in case anyone would watch this video and use it as a uh, determiner as to whether they should go to EVO or not. But in my opinion, the tournament itself, EVO, is really only going to be enjoyable if you're really into fighting games, particularly at least really into one of the, the games that uh, are being played at EVO that year. And uh, it's just because that's really 
you know, it's it's a convention center, but there's not much going on in the booths except for people trying to sell like posters and you know, it's it's not like an anime convention where you can just walk around and have fun the whole day and oh shit, where you can just walk around and um check out stuff all day. That that shit is not going to last. There are other things like there were little uh, arcades set up but uh, it's just not going to be entertaining unless you're super into fighting games. But I don't think that means that you're, you know, basically prohibited from going and enjoying your time in Las Vegas total. Uh, if you, unless you like fighting games, you could go to Evo with some friends and then, uh, and then just, you know, leave early with like a group or whatever, and then go find a place that's that you could get, get some drinks and uh, play video games. There are plenty of like nerdy bars. Was that it? I was hoping that would last the video. But yeah, there are plenty plenty of nerdy bars and like casino, obviously casinos and just different things to do. And uh, with Air, with Airbnb, I really think that um, it's do, it's doable to go to Vegas uh, and not like spend a thousand dollars. Uh, necessarily, uh, not including the flights, of course. But um, something I had learned on the second day at Evo is they have a bell desk, uh, B E L L E, where you can check in bags for of no cost. Of course, you're supposed to tip the uh, employees, but uh, you know it's it's very convenient and it prevent it like once I figured that out it uh, saved me on ubering to the place I was staying at next and having to uh, try and uh, check in my bags there and just hope like everything you know stays and works out this way I can actually get it checked in officially through Mandalay Bay even without having a place uh, without staying there but um yeah, I met a lot of, uh, I met a lot of people I know from the, just from learning Tekken at, uh, at EVO, like, uh, Rip, Repal, Parbu, uh, MYK, Riksta, I talked to him, I actually was watching him going over the pools on the flight over, uh, so it was cool to just see him there and then, like, bring it up. And I met the main man, Sui. I talked to Ryan Hart. Uh, I saw Eris there, but he kind of always seemed to be either busy with his matches or um, in, like, the middle of a swarm of uh, stoners. So I just, uh, I didn't really... Also, I never really thought of anything. I, I kind of tried to have at least something to say other than, hey, nice to meet you. But uh, not like I was, like, you know... I had like a speech for everyone that I, w I was planning on meeting, but uh, I just wanted to say something where it was like I wasn't going to just be wasting their time and I wasn't going to be asking them some dumb question. Um, and I just never really got that opportunity. But everyone I met was, was really cool. And uh, including, you know, not the like Tekken celebrities, but also just the, uh, you know, I would just... I had to kind of make friends there because I, I didn't know anyone who was actually going there. Uh, I just knew of like the guy who was local to, to Vegas and then um, people I've known from online. So I, uh, I met a lot of people just to do casuals, people who helped me learn things and um, people who were just willing to play a stranger like I would just walk up to someone who was just sitting alone and then ask uh, hey do you want to get some casuals and they're like yeah and uh, you know playing uh, playing offline is just ten times better than playing online uh, it's just I, I, I don't I don't really want to get into it uh, until later because I have a, a perfect example but uh, offline, you know, just think about the the idea that you'll you'll never get hate mail because the person's right there, and no one's gonna want to be like a complete douchebag unless you're inviting that behavior. And just everyone's more understanding of uh, everyone's just more understanding offline because you know you're sitting right next to the person and you're 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 there to have fun, not to like 
not to just get some wins. It's That's not what it's about. It's more about the experience. So I guess I'll talk now about the part that kind of bummed me out the most, which was... Well, not, not true. Uh, it didn't bum me out the most. It excited me and made me, like, thrilled and then bummed me out the most. But my own uh, performance at EVO. Uh, so day one was insane. I, I started playing offline and was realizing that I was so used to online timing that I was messing up every combo. Um, so I had to adjust to that as su like as quickly as possible. And uh, I even considered and, and tried to play characters that weren't my main characters, but I was still pretty good with. Just because I was more consistent with those combos. Um, but eventually I got used to it enough and uh, my pool started at 2 o'clock, so I had a decent amount of time to just, you know, linger around and figure out how EVO worked. Um, but uh, on day one, I did really well, like much better than even my own expectations were of how, how well I might do at my best on day one, which was uh, I only played three times because that's all I needed to play because in EVO, the way they had the pool set up, um, you only needed to get three wins to uh, exit out of your pools on winner's side, and I ended up, that's what I ended up doing. My first match was against, um, what was it, who was it against? How do I, that, okay, so maybe it's a good thing I'm making this video, because I'm starting to not remember. I know I played, um, Okay, yes, yes, now I remember. My first match was against uh, Johns F. He was a IRL streamer who had a, uh, a like, portable camera. Ooh, that was interesting that that combo worked. But, uh, yeah, he had a... Streaming his matches. And he, he played Anna. And uh, I played Elisa trying to pick a character where I'd actually be able to do the combos. But, um, he ended up taking the first match. It was incredibly close. I think it came down to me doing a rage drive. And then him, um, he, he, he did a rage drive and it, oh no, I did a rage drive. He did a throw and his throw beat my rage drive. Uh, and uh, if I would have hit with the rage drive, I would have won. Since he hit with a throw, he won, he won the match. So I was in this, like, internal dilemma as to whether to stick with that character which I knew I could pull out a win or switch to lay and I ended up switching to lay and it worked out the first game was rough I was still getting used to offline but the second game I played with lay I like beat him I think 3-0 um and yeah I I think he actually was so bummed out cause uh he I think he lost after that that he like deleted his archive for that stream I don't know, my friend who watched the stream after I told him it was recorded s said uh, that he was just complaining about how he lost to me uh, like for the next 30 minutes of his stream. So, um, my next match was against this guy named Hitagi who was like actually a really, a really good uh, Ling player. And it was close but I, I pulled, pulled it out and uh, yeah, he seemed frustrated with having lost, but, uh, you know, he was also pretty decent. Like, he shook my hand and everything, and, um, I was just happy to have beat him because he was good. And, uh, I, at that point, I didn't think my nerves were, uh, affecting me, um, because I was nervous, but I was still having good decision making, even when, like, nervous and having close rounds. Uh, and then my third match was well, one of the ones I was worried about the most. Uh, it was against a guy named um, Jonah from Japan who runs a stream called Cell Promote. Uh, and you can type in Cell Promote on YouTube to find his channel. Um, and he played Julia and then Nina. And I was watching him play Julia against this guy called Hose Monkey, this guy who I met and actually added uh, online from Evo. 
And uh, I was like, yeah, this guy is super good. This is going to be really tough. I didn't think, I thought he might be better than me, but I, I knew I had a chance. Uh, and I just, I just smoked him. Uh, it was like, it was incredible how easily I smoked him. But he, he was like visibly nervous every time um, I would do something punishable. He was like not punishing it. And then, uh, yeah, I just think he was doing, it was just like he couldn't get a read on me because he, he couldn't really define how good I was. Uh oh, but, um, yeah, so uh, having beat him is probably my, my greatest pride for for that uh, for Evo, and was I was just on cloud nine after beating this guy, even though he was nervous and I could tell he was playing maybe like half as good as he could. It was still great that I beat him, and I and you know I, it was not like I was without skill when I beat him. And then day two, I'll just get right to it. I lost my next two matches. My first match was against Rip. Uh, one of the guys who I've learned Tekken through the most, just watching his content. And uh, I had met him day one, and I thought I was going to have to play him day one, but he was in a separate part of the same pool. But uh, then I saw that I was playing him day two, and I was just, I was actually very confident that I could, uh, I could beat him. And I, I thought I was going to. I thought, in my head, I just saw this picturesque, um story unfolding where I actually got to like surpass the master you know as the student um, not like he directly trained me but I did learn a lot from him and if I would have beaten him I would have been able to like play what the fuck that was crazy I would have been able to play Sukin next who was like uh, the one who taught me the most about Tekken because Lei was always my main since Tekken 6 but um yeah, what happened was I got incredibly nervous and uh, was just doing very stupid things. Like I was doing this move, and if you finish the high, the high can be ducked on that move. It's forward, forward, three, four for those who know notation. Uh, and I was, this is the biggest thing I think I noticed. There are other things where I was just nervous, but I normally will only finish it maybe once or twice in a game. Uh, I certainly have never before done that move and always finished it and I was so nervous when I was playing and and uh, the crowd was just like cheering me on every time I would win around and when it was looked like I was going to win the first game that my brain just kind of went into uh, autopilot in a way that like not my brain I would say my fingers because my brain was absolutely present enough to say like, okay, don't do the high next time. Um, that's the move right there. Okay, for the second time I tried to do it and didn't show the high. Okay, let me just do this move. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. It's like he knows I'm trying to do a move that's somewhat slow. Oh, he just instant jet uh, up. Oh my god, instant dark uppercut. Of course. This move right here. I kept doing the high. No matter what, I would do the high. And that's not something I would ever do online or offline in any other situation. But, um... You know, it's part of, it's part of what it is to, to be able to overcome your nerves and, uh... He had tournament experience, I didn't, it was my first time playing offline, and uh, it was just, it was a bummer, and I was like, and then I was just like, kind of defeated, like, it, I still had fun, but I was so defeated, and then I played this Bob player after that, where I just wasn't trusting myself after that, I like, couldn't trust my decision making, because I was just so shook, um, like, there were many times where the Bob went for a hell sweep and I was about to duck, but then I, like, second-guessed myself. And, uh, just doing stupid stuff that I wouldn't normally do. Like, Bob would do the, uh, 2-3, what is it, 2-1-3. And, uh, I know you're supposed to sidestep right to avoid the third hit, but I was, like, jabbing to interrupt. And I play Bob. 
so it was just real I was just doing really stupid shit and I was my mind wasn't present but uh, what ended up cheering me up was the Evo viewing party the next day where it was just I just got to play with a lot of different Tekken players specifically this one um, Raven player where we had so many offline matches that we just were able to like g break down things uh, step by step like different interactions with moves and I'm, I'm just uh, I'm getting really worried about the time so I'm just gonna cut off the video here but yeah playing offline when someone gets frustrated you can just stop the match and talk about why they're frustrated you don't have to be like hey what's frustrating you man like some faggot but you just uh, ask them like so uh, is that is that really all sidesteppable and then you test it with them and then it's like their suffering becomes your suffering and you've you've like shown some empathy and it's like now you've kind of bonded where and online one of them would just be frustrated and just fucking leave so uh, not just that I just connected with a lot of really cool people and and had a ton of fun at Evo so I'm just uh, I'm glad I went Round four. Fight.
to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. Alisa Boskanovich. Round one, fight. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7.
Four. Fight. One, two. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7, Alisa Boskanovic.
Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. Steve Fox. Round one, fight. <laughs> Round four, fight. Thank you. 
Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7, Alisa Boskanovich. Round one, fight. Round three, fight. <laughs> 